Hello from Ethereum Sky. Today, everything's a bit more informal, um, but I figured that you've already watched my videos on building your script, building your shot list, building your schedules, your A-roll questionnaires. Um, however, I myself am currently preparing for another mini doc project in just about 10-ish days. I'm gonna be up in the US in the state of Minnesota um, filming this story about about foxes, about this young woman there who started her own fox rescue. She saves uh, foxes from fur farms and from abusive backgrounds. And um, and NBC trusted me with uh, with this with this uh, little mini duck project. So I'm headed up there. And well, I need to do my own pre-production for this project. It's about time. Um, so I figured that in this slightly more informal setting, if you need some more practice, if you need some more advice, I'll let you, I'll let you stick with me through it. I'll let you watch me and, um, and I'll try to, well, guide you through it. Um, I actually already recorded this video for the past two hours and I just realized that, well, nothing recorded. So, so I'm starting over. Um, Pretty irritating, yes, but uh, but what to do? Well, um, in my pre-production video series, um, if you haven't seen it yet, uh, you might want to check that out first. Um, but I told you that usually most projects should start or would start with this kind of write-up that I myself generally don't ever do. Um, for this project, I also wouldn't bother doing it because it's already kind of in my head. Um, but just to, just to properly show you how this actually should be done, how this would be done, and especially if you're a beginner, which I guess that's why you're watching this series, it would be helpful to you, or I hope it would be helpful to you if I do it the proper way. So, so I will do it the proper way just to show you really step by step from the start. Um, how I how I handle this process. Let me make sure it's recording. Um, no, it stopped recording again. Damn thing. No, wait. No, wait, it didn't. No, okay, we're good. Um, this one's recording too. Okay, I got too many cameras on me. It makes me nervous. And just when I'm nervous, I talk too much. And, uh, and I am talking too much. I'm really not good on camera. If I wanted to be on camera, I'd become an actor. Anyways, um, as I go through this, I'm going to keep some notes on my phone because I, I just can't be bothered repeating everything that, that already didn't get recorded. So anyways, let's get started. Um, first step, well, as with any story, your first step is going to be research. And well, as part of my research, um, I mean, first of all, they got a website. They got a website which already has quite a bit of information. Um, so I already read their whole about section. It talks about Michaela, who's the founder of this of this organization of this rescue. It talks about her backstory. I've already exchanged some emails with their team, so I already talked to some of them. Um, of course, on their website, there's much more of a write up. I I read through all of this before, but whatever story you're working in, you're working on, that's likely where you would start. Then I also had, of course, a look, you know, Wikipedia, that's pretty obvious, um, but it talks a lot about, about foxes, about their behaviors in, in captivity and in the wild. So that gave me some, some ideas, some thoughts. And, and most importantly, I've already talked to them. I've already got some facts of the story. Um, so, so essentially now I open up a Word document and we're going to do this very basic, um, or not basic, very um, uh, elementary. No, that's also the wrong word. We're going to do this write-up, um, which is essentially the very summary of what your of what your end story will be. And this is really more or less, or it starts off more or less like a brainstorming session. So um, so don't dwell on it too much. It's um, It starts as a brainstorming session and it leads you to the following steps. 
So knowing this story format, this project will, this Fox project will be a short mini doc, roughly between four, four and six minutes. NBC doesn't give me um, specific time restrictions. Um, but this is the general length I tend to aim for, um, that those projects tend to do well with viewership. So um, let's say, um, and there's no specific template for this or anything, I just opened up a Word document. My camera's still going, now I'm gonna be checking like a paranoid person, but okay, everything's still going. Um, so let's start with uh, with my opening. I know this format of those mini deck projects. I want to open an Akachi audio bit, and I'm checking at my notes of what I already did before. Um, I want to open on what what is so great about foxes, and why do we need them? So this is just my overall headline, let's say, for this opening sequence. And I expect that I will spend around 30 seconds on this. Um, the whole point of my opening sequence in these mini doc projects is that I, I need to catch my audience right away. If I, don't, if I don't hook my audience, if I don't get their attention in the first few seconds, they're not going to stick with me through their story. and. Um, if you're on YouTube, for example, if you look at the analytics, that tells you exactly where your viewership drops off. And, um, and I can see how on so many projects, it's, it's really those first few seconds that viewership drops. If I can get through those first few seconds, if I can keep my viewer interested, um, then viewership tends to, tends to remain steady throughout, uh, well, throughout projects. So... What I want to do is I want to open up this story really on the on the central central message of this story. I want to establish what it is that's um, that's important about foxes. Um, I want to open visually. I want to show foxes. They're cute and they're fluffy, and 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 people like to click on pictures of cute animals or on videos of cute animals online. Um, which works to my advantage here, but this is not just a story about cute animals. I'm not making making animal videos here. I'm trying to tell a story. So very quickly, I want to show those cute animals, which are hopefully going to keep my audience paying attention for a few seconds. And then very quickly, I want to establish that these cute animals, actually most of them have a very harrowing, difficult story, difficult background. Some of them have come from fur farms, uh, they were rescued, or some of them, they were abandoned by their owners who bought them as a pet, not realizing how much trouble they are. And essentially, I want to establish that really quickly within just a few, a few sentences saying that, look, these are foxes, um, they're lovely, amazing animals, but um, but there's this problem that they're facing. This is my beginning. This is where I want to establish what the story is about and what, what problem, let's say, we'll be solving throughout this story. So, so let's do this as a rough little write-up. And again, all of this is really just rough. I'm doing this based on what I already know about this story. Um, but this document, at least for this current moment, this is just for me. I'm not showing this to anybody. Well, I'm showing it to you, but normally this is something that I do for myself to really get the story structure down. So, um, foxes are great because... I'll let my interviewee finish. They're great because they're so friendly or they're so fluffy or trusting or or... or I don't know, helpful, caring, or because they live in packs and they care for each other, whatever. She can finish that sentence better than I, than I can. Um, and let's say, and this is like this, I'm writing this essentially in her voice, in, in her, Michaela's uh, voice. Michaela's the owner of the fox rescue. So when I am among foxes, I feel that everything's gonna be okay. I can't stand seeing foxes suffer. That's why I decided to open this rescue and help save those 
animals um, to care animals I want to care for them or I care for them I find them safe healthy permanent homes um, I mean okay this doesn't this doesn't sound all that catchy but um, but that's that's good enough it gets it's it establishes what I want from this sequence so essentially I want just a quick catch on what it is about foxes that uh, that this girl that she finds so appealing so lovely I want to establish why she loves them but I want to establish that um, that that it's not just a story about oh I love foxes and here's a bunch of pictures of foxes it's a story about about someone needing something those animals that need help that need a home and this girl that's working who's working to to give them what they need to improve their lives so this sequence would be just around 30 seconds um, I'm good there and from there um, visually it's not really an a, a separate sequence but I know that the way I edit those projects is I establish my setting now um, and this will be just about 15 seconds of uh, visual shots or b-roll um, so what that means is that I know that um, for the intro sequence yeah I'm gonna have my talking bit with a bunch of pictures of foxes then I'm gonna pop the title on a screen probably on some hero shot and then um, once from that the music will change and I establish my setting that's likely gonna be a few few drone shots plus maybe some quick uh, shots establishing where we are a welcome sign to the fox rescue or or some imagery of the fox rescue or or just a shot of the street seeing their seeing their uh, well their center out there something like that uh, it's it's enough but as I'm showing those shots I'm already gonna hear my a roll voice Michaela talking about about the following section which uh, should be something in Michaela's background um, and uh, la, 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 let's see so um, something like I grew up in I first I first got into contact with foxes when I was 15 and I was asked to foster a fox um, I found it interesting or challenging because of whatever she can finish the sentence and I am taking all this information from from her website actually it's right there in her very in her very bio so in the interview I'll ask her to tell me that in a bit more personal way I'll ask her some more follow-up questions to what she wrote here in this very brief bio but for the purpose of my very general write-up that's um, that's exactly what I need so I found it interesting or challenging because of something during that time I got to know many fur farm owners and people working with foxes which helped me learn more about those animals and their needs mm. seeing that there weren't many resources not uh, many people were doing anything to help I eventually decided to take action myself okay something like that and I figured that this would take me around 45 seconds um, for those shots I would uh, for this sequence I would show probably some shots of Michaela maybe maybe earlier in the day when she opens the gates or when she when she lets the foxes out uh, from their enclosure so I don't know exactly um, what their what their daily routine is like but um, but I can cover about okay 10-15 seconds I'm gonna be seeing just a roll shots just her and her sit down interview another 10-15 seconds I can use shots of her 
of, of the early morning routines of kind of her opening the gates, foxes running out, and another 10 to 15 seconds could be, uh, could be covered with some hero shots or simply some interaction shots of her with the foxes. It partly depends on what exactly she will tell me. Um, I could use possibly some archival materials and uh, they've been very good uh, at, their, at their organization with communication and with they're just very kind and helpful so I'm pretty sure they could find some photos of, um, of Michaela's past so maybe that could be a, a resource uh, but anyways let's focus on let's focus on this for now and I'll get to my visuals and my b-roll later when I'm working on that. Um, so we have our catchy opening bit. Uh, then my title would go right here before my setting. Then I jump to my setting, establish where I am while starting Michaela's, uh, Michaela's talk, her flashback looking back. And now that you know, we established what the story, we established the premise, we established where it started and how it led to where it is today. And, um, and then let's talk Let's focus on what Save a Fox, what this organization actually is. Um, and this will be kind of a bigger section, I guess, because it's a big part of the story. Let's say around 60 seconds. I will see if this times out uh, correctly or, or no, let's cut this down I mean those times are very rough for right now anyways and uh, have the time it doesn't end up being super accurate uh, but um, but often it but it gives me a guide you know it averages out so um, so let's look at how this organization came to be and what it is today so I started save a fox with uh, X number of animals. I don't know how many they started with actually I need to ask. Um, at the beginning it was only me working alone. Today we provide a home to X number of animals. I actually don't know exactly how many they have. It's probably on their website. I need to need to look closer. Um, but this means too much work for one person. Luckily, I've been able to gather a small team. There are X of us here now. I will say there are four of them just because she has four staff listed on their, on their website. Um, I'm not sure if there are other actual like full-time staff or not, but uh, she can clarify that when we meet. So there are four of us here now on the here on the farm now. Uh, four of us here on the farm now. And they also have some volunteers. And we also have a number of volunteers helping out with various tasks. Uh, and let's establish a little bit more about their animals. Um, all of our animals well, all of our foxes come from well fur farms and abusive backgrounds. Our space is quite small but uh, we have over the last years already managed to expand to two other locations i think that's correct um, allowing us to help even more foxes and as of recently even a few minks My camera still recording? Yes, it's still recording. Good. I know how to press the record button. About time to learn after after two decades working in the field. Learn to press the record button. Okay. 
Um, so this might be closer to a minute than 45 seconds, but um, and I jump, I jumbled all of that together a little bit, but okay, that will that will do for now. So I started Save a Fox with this many animals. At the beginning, it was only me working alone. Today, we provide a home to this many animals. But this means too much work for one person, luckily. So, okay, so we established how many they started. They grew to this many. She started alone. Now she has a team um, where their foxes come from and their space. Okay, that's enough facts about their organization. Actually, that's. I might move this section somewhere else or no, actually I know what this section is going to end up being. This section is going to be end up being titles and screen largely, which means that it's going to be shortened because it's a lot of, it's a lot of just dry facts. I don't like to have my, my speakers giving all the dry facts that can be simply just listed quickly and, and addressed in a few seconds. So I'll just make a note for myself. Um, yeah, I'll just make a note for myself. I mean, th this will be, I don't know exactly how I'll handle it, but it will be a combination, maybe some interview, maybe some, maybe some titles on screen, but a lot of this, like how many she started and how many she has now, I don't need to hear her say it. I can put a quick title on screen within five seconds, we'll establish that and, um, and move on with the more interesting parts of the story. Um, after that, Da, 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 da. After that, let's get to their actual, to the actual fun stuff. What they do, how they work, how they do it. So step, a kind of a step by step uh, guide to their daily routine. Step by step, what do they actually do on a daily basis? Uh, and this will be the longer section, around 60 seconds, I guess. Um, so, okay, instead of writing it out, instead of writing it out in a paragraph, let me just write some quick questions. So, who... Do, 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 do. So, who are the animals at... Uh, that make it to save a fox and those are mostly animals from the four farms and from like pets that people people adopted foxes because they thought it's just a cute dog or cat alternative and then they realized that that foxes cannot be trained and are too destructive and they abandoned them so those foxes also end up at the rescue uh la la la, la. okay what else um what needs do those animals um, most commonly have? So when they rescue them, I want to know, like, okay, this animal comes to the rescue. What's, what's, some, what's the common problems that they have to deal with? I guess they probably need some medical exams. I'm just guessing maybe some of those animals are malnourished. Maybe some of them are traumatized by whatever situation they might be coming from. So I guess that this is an interesting area that they... They probably have things that they do to, to help those animals. Um, how, how is your organization able to address those needs? Uh, da, 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 da. Um, and I want them to guide me through the process. And I want them to guide me through that process because that allows me to uh, to show more active visuals too. If they say something like, okay, we need to go to a, to a vet and give them a medical exam, I know that I'm going to be filming with uh, filming a medical examination in one of their foxes so I can connect that and visually show something, something different, something more interesting rather than foxes running around. If they tell me that... Um, uh, yeah, I don't know, maybe we need to somehow give medicine to these foxes or give them a separate enclosure or maybe there's one specific fox that got to them and had a i don't know a broken leg and needed to needed to roll around and some cart that they constructed all of those give me kind of visual ideas for my projects where okay maybe they have pictures of this and 
Michaela, the founder, the owner of this organization, she's actually very active on social media and on YouTube. So all of their work is uh, is already well documented with video, which for me is a plus because I, I hopefully I would have access if I need to to some of her past clips and some of those might be very useful in the project. So. So essentially, I want them to tell me of how they how they rehabilitate those animals, how they help them, because it gives me it gives me options for my visuals, for my B-roll. It allows me to make that story in the end more interesting. Um, so, yeah, what else? And what happens story wise to complete it? We had a start with the animals coming there with them, you know, going through whatever activities and processes while at the organization and finally what happens to those animals afterwards. Um, so I guess that some of them get adopted, some of them probably stay at their center. I read on their side that uh, for the most part, they are not able to release them back into the wild on the simple grounds that most of the animals they care for are captive bred, raised in captivity, in captivity and they simply wouldn't make it on their own in the wild. Um, which is also something that I hope they'll they'll talk to me about. And uh, da, 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 da. so so just since I noted these general rough questions, um, let me try to rewrite that as a as a sort of a paragraph or as a narrative a little bit more, since that's the point of this whole write up that we're doing here. So it would be something within those lines. This is Finnegan. And they do have one of their main foxes. Uh, he's named Finnegan, so that's a real name, although the whole story that I'm making up here is bullcrap. I'm just pulling this off out of my arm. I mean, I'm sure that there's some parallels, but I'm just making this up based on what I already talked to them about, what I already read. I'm sure that they'll tell me a story that's somewhat similar to this, but bear with me. So. This is Finnegan. Finnegan. He came to us when he was just two months old. He was old. He was sick and malnourished. He was in bad need of vet care. We took him in. We fed him. Uh, took him to a vet. He needed this and that type of help. I don't know exactly what type of help, but he very quickly started to get better. Uh, we offered him a home at our rescue. And once he was strong enough, uh, once he was strong enough, we connected with an animal lover in the U.S. state of, let's say, California. First state that comes to mind that I'm totally making this whole story up. California, who was looking to adopt a fox. And as such, we were able to place Finnegan in a loving forever home something like this it's actually not a true story i'm pretty sure the fox uh finnegan i think he's still with them uh michaela has all her pictures with him so i think he's still around there with them but um but essentially the idea is that um, while they tell me this story as opposed to talking about foxes in general, about their animals in general, it would be nice if she focuses on a specific fox, on a specific animal, because um, then it lets me, it lets me build a stronger connection with uh, with my viewers. If, for example, I show early on in my catchy bit, let's say I show Michaela opening the cages and particularly greeting, playing with one of the foxes. And back then, this was just a, like at the very beginning of the video, this ends up being just a small chunk of B-roll. However, now we bring it back and we say, this fox actually has a name. He's, it establishes, it personalizes him. And, um, and this fox has a story. And so she goes through this story, talking essentially about the story of older animals, but through, through, through the story of this one particular 
fox that came to them that was heard that had specific lead, specific needs and they addressed those needs they helped him and through their work what's the result they helped him find um, his final forever home um, so that's the idea you know and if she talks about a specific fox doesn't matter finnegan or or um, any other animal at their farm if she tells me their story um that's that's helps the viewer more directly connect with this animal and with this story. We're not just talking about a general animal or a hundred animals that live under in their organization, but about this specific one. And then we realize that every one of those foxes they have there has a similar story. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. Where am I at? So 30 seconds, 45 seconds, one minute and a half. Okay, then two minutes, 15, three minutes, 15. And this was my, this was my main heavy part. Okay, good. So from here on, on from here on, let's jump to a small section about, about foxes. <laughs> and if this was the personal section, then let's make this one a little bit more, um, a little bit more about animals, a little bit about foxes in general. So let's say another 45 seconds. And here what I want to talk about is, um, is a, bit more, a bit more playfully. Let's talk about foxes. Um, so I think she already said it, but we have X number of foxes at our rescue. No, I don't want that. Um, Foxes tend to be very curious animals. I don't know. Um, um, all of the foxes in our rescue have their own distinct personalities. And from there on, I dig in. Uh, no, actually, wait. Foxes tend to be curious animals on the fox. Uh, here I would have her talk in the wild foxes tend to live in this way I just leave this as a placeholder so essentially she can talk to me about um, what uh, yeah what wild foxes how they live their lives how they behave about their behaviors about their personalities about their ways um, and then from there, I can jump into jump back into the foxes in their in their organization. So foxes tend to be very curious animals in the wild. They tend to live in this or that way. All of the foxes in our rescue have their own distinct personalities. I'm just guessing so because I've worked on a few other similar animal stories. Um, there's one story about musk oxen in Alaska. Um, which I also shot for NBC. That was my first story for NBC. And that was a pretty cool story because musk oxen have been native to Alaska once upon a time. They're those ancient animals that lived back during the ice age still. And in Alaska, they died out. Um, so uh, a couple decades ago or a few decades ago, um, this one entrepreneur ended up finding a few musk oxen that still survive that still exist and live in the wild in greenland and he ended up bringing them to alaska and um and uh wait is it yeah and he ended up domesticating them essentially uh musk oxen can be fully domesticated from what i remember correctly but essentially they they live on a farm they get cared for and um and they produce this super soft material um, called kivute, which is essentially the underwool. It's not something that humans are, you know, killing them for or hurting them for. It's actually something that they naturally shed and it just blows away in the pastures normally. But in this organization, they end up collecting it and, um, and, and turning it into super soft scarves and hats and so on. Anyways, I totally get lost track. But I remember that, uh, that those musk oxen had super, super interesting personalities. And really, each one of those animals was different. And, and it tends to be that any animal-related story I film, and, you know, the, the, 
my subjects tend to tell me the same thing that you know that this animal that's the shy one that hides in the in the barn and this is the playful one that always comes and slobbers over everybody so anyways let's talk about fox personalities um Mm. So all the fox and the rescues have different personalities, uh, and then we can focus on a specific fox. So this is, I don't know, Jack uh, Sparrow. Um, he's X years old. Um, he's a little bit shy, but also quite curious. His favorite food are blueberries. I don't know. Yeah, I think I read somewhere on their side that uh, that they that the foxes like like blueberries. I don't know. So, anyways, just to just to talk about foxes in a bit of a more general way in this section, and then things I could ask also in addition to that would be like what what characteristics define most foxes as in you know everybody's familiar with the dog a dog is a man's best friend and a cat cat wants to dominate the world and and kill all the humans you know those kind of tropes but um but yeah but i want to ask her you know what's how she would define foxes in in that matter um so talk to me about typical behaviors of those animals and, um, and maybe how are captive bred foxes different from those in the wild and da -da 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 -da, what else um, different those in the wild and and maybe talk to me about different um, species of foxes, which, uh, oh, and that's actually an, another interesting question. It's talk to me about different species of foxes and um, are foxes native to your region here in Minnesota and yeah because there are different species of foxes and I actually wonder now I don't know the answer to this question if they if they care for different foxes or just for a specific kind um, do foxes natively live there or was it or was it just um, uh, are they just there because rich people buy exotic pets and um, and fur farms make a business? I, I, I don't know, but those are worthy questions to ask. Okay, and by now I think we hit uh, roughly my four minute mark in the story. <laughs> 45, 1. And a half, two fifteen, three fifteen. Okay, so roughly four minutes. My camera is still rolling. I hope so. I think so. Yep, still going. I'm gonna have real fun editing this at forty-five minutes already. <laughs> uh, la 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 la. Hmm. All right. So after I did that, after I did that, let's change perspectives. Um, we've been hearing mostly Michaela, probably some of her staff too, telling me this story, but they're all speaking from just one perspective. So let's look at some other perspectives. And here I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to handle this yet. Um, there's essentially three additional perspectives that I have sort of have or might have access to. Um, first will be, I'll get to film a vet um, examining uh, some of their animals and this is one perspective that I'll be able to feature. Another perspective will be an adoptee, uh, this lady who adopted a fox from Save a Fox, from the organization. In fact, she ended up um, 
she ended up starting her own rescue afterwards uh, with this fox that she adapted. Uh, la, 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 la. Mm. And in fact, she ended up starting off. Wait, I, I lost my thought. Um, anyways, <laughs> sorry, second time. I'm repeating all this information because I didn't press the damn record button. And the third interview, uh, or the third kind of perspective that I might get, it's not confirmed yet, but it would be with, uh, with a local teacher. I guess that their organization ran some kind of a community event where local kids, local students got to meet the foxes, play with foxes, and, um, and I, it would be nice to have this teacher talk about the event and how it was helpful to her students and, how, and the value that it had. Um, Generally, when I approach those those kinds of mini doc stories, I aim to have three different perspectives and for contained stories that focus more or less on a specific person or on a specific business organization, what I try to do is I try to have my main story, my main story, of course, from the founder or from the owner or from the key face behind this organization or this work, which in this case will be Michaela. And then um, for a slightly different perspective, I want to talk to her staff. Um, but then I also really like to have a third kind of outsider's perspective. So in case of my sto story on Molossia, for example, that outsider's perspective was just a quick audio bit from one of the visitors to the Republic of Molossia. Um, and here, the kind of an issue I have is that the vet, um, that's an interesting perspective, but it doesn't really relate uh, to the core of my story. Um, well, it might actually, I don't know. I mean, I'm going to do it anyways, but, but I just don't see how I can get what I'm particularly looking for from this just yet. And the adoptee uh, part, the adoptee perspective, that's really interesting, but this would end up having to be a Zoom interview. And I know that in this, in this current time, of, in these post-COVID times, that's totally normal, that's totally accepted, but... I just don't like those Zoom interviews. They, they 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 look bad. You know, I don't mind if maybe my viewers don't care, maybe my producers don't care, but but if I can avoid it, I don't like doing them. I prefer to shoot a proper interview. The other problem with this adoptee interview is that um, she's uh, she's located. No, wait, what was I gonna say? The other problem is that she's actually connected to Save a Fox. So. They initially, from what I understand, is they initially met because um, because this lady adopted a fox from Save a Fox. She and later started her own rescue, um, inspired, I guess, by this fox or by the by their collaboration. But yeah, they built this partnership and they work together, which is which is great. It's admirable, but it's not exactly this outside perspective that I'm hoping for this very interview. Um, so this teacher interview would be actually the perfect one, but, uh, but this is not entirely dependent on me. I'm still waiting for a confirmation if that will be possible. Um, and of course the project also has very, very limited budget. I only, it's only going to be a one day shoot. So, so I need to make sure that I can make it happen. But for the sake of finalizing, getting through this uh, this write-up. Let's say that I'm going to have all three and I, I could do something where I have all three and perhaps I build some kind of a montage between them. So, so let's say like this, the vet's perspective. It's just a quick bit, uh, 20 seconds. You, you know, the, the thing is that a lot of these things I'll end up with a half hour mini interview and I know from the start that it will end up being just a quick audio bit, maybe one, two sentences at most. But but that's all that's needed. And unfortunately or fortunately with the time limitation of some of these these short mini docs, that's, uh, well, that's what it is. So um, that's perspective. Helping animals. So she would say something within the lines of helping animals in need is important because of reasons. I'll let her finish the sentence. By saving these foxes, Michaela is doing a real service 
to the community. community and helping creatures which otherwise might not survive. I don't know, I'm making this up again, but um, essentially, essentially I would look to answer three questions, not just from the vet, but from these, from these three, um, from these three uh, side interviews. So let's say here for the vet, um, why is it important to care for animals? How does a community or your community benefit from the work Save a Fox is doing? And can you talk about the health of foxes at Save a Fox? When they first arrive there and throughout their time there. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually setting up um, three layers to more or less the same question um, or rather, yeah, let's, that's a good description actually. So when I asked this question, I did it kind of backwards, but this, this last one, can you talk about the health of foxes at Save a Fox? And I want the vet to tell me that, okay, that some foxes who come to the rescue when I first get to examine them, they're very sick, blah, blah, blah. But then over time, I've seen them grow healthy. This establishes to me how each and every fox, it comes into the rescue, it comes into the vet, and it's maybe not in a good shape. And how through the work this rescue does, the, the, they do at the rescue, um, they essentially help this fox. On a second layer or second level, I want to establish of how this, how this work um, with individual foxes, how that's relevant to a larger community, uh, yeah, to a larger community. So, for example, maybe, I don't know, but just maybe, um, maybe she can talk about things like um, we have less accidents because there's less animals on the streets and... Um, and uh, it's safer for the drivers, it's safer for the animals. Um, they're not out on the streets, they, they, they don't get killed as often. Maybe, I don't know, I'm making this up. Or maybe she can say something like it helps the community because it, um, I don't know, there's, it provides a space for, for local children to come and learn about animals. I don't know, what, what, whatever. Um, and then the third level is the big picture level that tells me like, okay, you know, we have, we started with this small little one personal fox that got healthcare and help from the rescue. And then we expanded to the community level. And now we're looking at big, big picture. Why is it important to care for animals, to help animals? And this goes beyond just foxes. This looks at the big picture. If, if every, this makes you, you as the viewer, um, it shows you how your work as just one person doing little things, how that affects really a grander scale of things. So if I cover those three layers, that's my beginning, middle and end of sorts. And, um, and yeah, and it builds those bridges between very small actions that they're doing and, and the global action to, to, to help to care for animals. Um, okay, what is my next one now? My next one, let's talk about the adoptee bit. I don't know if I will do that yet, but, but for the sake of this write-up, let's say so. So what was your first connection to foxes? How did you get connected to save a fox? What led you to adopt your fox? Your own fox? How has raising foxes, how is Raising foxes different than cats or dogs? 
what's the experience like caring for a fox talk to me about starting your own rescue what led you to open your own rescue talk to me about the challenges you face talk to me about your collaboration with save a fox um okay i wrote this out just as questions but these are just some questions that i would ask the adoptee um or adopter not adoptee why do i keep calling her adop no adoptee is the fox right i think so um yeah i guess that makes sense um so yeah so from her i would be looking again from like from small picture to to big picture so it starts with just her background i i don't actually know um how it began for her but she came into connection with foxes through that connection she got uh, she got acquainted with save a fox with the organization they ended up adopt she ended up adopting her own fox from the organization and through that um it led her to open her own rescue in her own location uh nowhere near nowhere near save a fox and um and it essentially again it's one thing leading to the next to the next to the next um so i could likely combine that with the vets in, with the vets interview and perhaps with the community member teachers interview i could make this into sort of a sort of a montage let's see so let's write up this community member bit community member teacher probably quick bit around 20 seconds and she would talk to me specifically about this community event that took place uh, they mentioned it to me at, at save a fox when i talked to them i don't know the details but um but i'll just roughly very roughly paraphrase what they did so um i got to know save a fox during a community event Michaela brought two of her animals to our school to meet our students during the event many of our kids got to meet the foxes they got to learn about their lives they got to learn about challenges and responsibilities Mm, that come with caring for animals this was a very positive event thanks to which our students were able to learn more about responsibility and about those unique animals many of them have already told me that when they grow up they also want to work with and help animals i don't know um again this is all just improvised based on the on the research uh, that i've done based on the information i have so far just at this point still recording okay still recording not too bad <laughs> this one's still recording this one's still recording great um okay 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 where do we go from here um, and right about here we had our four minute mark this is another minute actually it's going to be shorter than a minute but let's say if my, let's say this is my five minute mark um da -da 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 all right and now that i let's revisit so we have our opening bit something catchy about foxes establishing my story 
Then we take a flashback to to establish the background. We talk about the organization and their work. We focus on daily activities. We talk about foxes as the animals. Then we have the vet's perspective, the adapter's perspective, the community members, essentially my three three different POVs. And from there, okay, so I covered everything I need and we're in the part, uh, we're in the ending part of the story now. So um, there's two parts to this, how I want to end this. I want to um, and there's a very good chance that when I sit down to edit, I will choose one of those. But um, but for the sake of scripting and for my filming, I will film both of them. So one thing that I always do with these stories is I look into the future. So let's focus on the future. And this, the ending will end up being also just around 30 seconds. So... <clears throat> In the future, some things I want her to talk about would be how has your work been affected by the recent global instability? Um, this is this is not directly related to my story, but I find that a lot of these projects in the last couple of years, um, COVID and other global issues have forced people to really address address a lot of problems. I mean, obviously it's a lot of new problems came out, came to light, but, um, but this instability in many cases forced people into, into a different way of thinking, into a different way of looking at the future. And, um, and this has somehow become a question that I ask because it's, um, for many people, things, things they were doing, what they were doing two years ago and how they're thinking of their business, of their work, of their organization today has often significantly changed. So, so I just like asking this question, especially when it comes to focusing on businesses, organizations, or like individual initiatives um, and stories based on those. Um, talk to me about any of your recent challenges and that's again related to covid or inflation or what have you um, how have you worked to overcome those issues uh, how do you see the future at save a fox playing out um, what are your future hopes, goals, or dreams? What future do you hope for, imagine, for each of your foxes? Mm -hmm. Is that future realistic? How can we as people, as communities, make that future happen? So these are actually kind of interesting last questions. Um, and at the end for me, at the end, and also to some extent at the beginning of these short stories, it's not about, it's not as much about answering a question. What I, what I really tend to do is I just ask, I try to think of kind of creative, imaginative questions that, uh, that touch on the humanity of my speakers. Like I want to, I want to end my story on some, and an idea that makes you think on, um, yeah, I mean, like, like here, if let's say, you know, what future do you hope imagine for each of your foxes? I have no idea what she will answer. Um, but let's say she could tell me something about hoping that, you know, that there are more forests and there are more safe places without human, without human involvement where foxes can actually thrive and grow and live safely and happily. And this is a, you know, aside from being a relevant idea, relevant topic, relevant and important uh, hope, it's, um, 
it, 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 it lets me ask, like, is it, is it realistic? And whether it is or not, um, it lets me get her perspective, perspective on how can we make that happen. So it no longer is this abstract dream of, you know, of some green utopia, um, but it can tell us that each of us, as viewers watching this video, each of us has a role to play. So her, Michaela, we already established what her, what her entire life is dedicated to, how she spends her days helping these foxes. And she does so, as we find out in this, clo in this closing part, because she's working towards this dream of a world that's better for those animals. And um, as such, it lets us as viewers feel that we have this power too. If we share her ideas, if we share her, um, well, the work that she's doing, if we, if, we, if we think it's right, if we think it's good, if we think it's worthy, it gives us practical, it, it gives us practical advice. Um, it gives us motivation that we should also aim whether in the same direction or in a related direction or in a different direction, and that we actually have the power. So, so yeah, so I like those kinds of imaginative questions that, that kind of leave you, leave you, when you finish the video, you're left thinking about it, but you're also left feeling that you have some, you have some power as an individual. Um, and finally, la 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 la. Um, and this is just a variation of the same thing because up there I already talked about the future. Maybe I should actually move those two questions about imagination down here. They're more fit, but um, here's what I want to add. What can we as humans or as communities learn from foxes? What have foxes taught you? Mm. And more or less what I would expect her to answer would be something like, I think that foxes are fantastic because of reasons. I think killing animals is a cruel practice that served a necessary purpose in the past, but as humanity, we need to rise above it. It's time to take responsibility and it's time to be selfless. We need to help these animals because they are very loving creatures. When, and this last sentence is actually the key, uh, when I am sad and need someone to cheer me up, I can always trust that Finnegan will be there for me. All right, something like this, and I'm again, I'm putting words in her mouth. Actually, I'm not. This is again just for me, um, but it just sort of, kind of gives you gives you an idea. Um, like for example, in uh, in my other NBC story on the on the Gentle Barn in St. Louis, also in the U.S., this was a couple that offers. Um, that rehabilitates troubled animals and then offers therapy sessions with those animals to the general public. And um, in the closing, in the closing, uh, my subject, she talked about, she talked about the fact that she sees cows as setting an example for humans, the way that they're very motherly and they're very caring. Um, and the fact that she always finds comfort in being able to go into the meadow and lie next to next to this cow, give her a hug, cuddle up and um, and this uh, this helps helps her calm down and it teaches her something about peace. 
And this was a very nice closing to, to that story that dealt with abused animals, which are being rehabilitated. Um, in my musk oxen story, also for NBC, also dealing with animals, um, I had a lady talk to me about the fact that it's fascinating to see those animals. And if we don't care about, about saving the environment, then the next generation will not get to ever see them, experience them, get to, get to spend any time with them. And she felt so grateful that, that she can be here to, to interact with them, to actually connect with history because those musk oxen are remnants of, 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 of the last two ice ages and they're still alive and this is very special so it's i i want to end on this on this personal special note at the end that that leaves you with a good feeling lets you know that the story is not yet finished but it also kind of plants a seed in hopefully each viewer and tells you that you know we all have a role to to play so all right i think this should lead us to six minutes and 15 runtime six minutes 15 seconds uh, which is perfect actually it's not gonna be as cleanly broken down time wise as it is here i can already tell because th these three montages these three perspectives first of all it might not be all three of them i'm not sure yet and it's not entirely dependent on me uh, but rather on on my contacts there and what they can arrange but i think this this especially if i end up making a montage it could be a bit shorter but on the other hand i also know that um, like this section earlier on on foxes and under daily work might get a bit longer there will also be some bits where i might film some cute bits with some of their staff feeding feeding the foxes or, or playing with them and talking about particular activities uh, that might end up adding a little bit something in there. But it, in the end, excuse me, it will average out to to around, just around this. So um, here's the deal. I am, I am technically done with this, finally, <laughs> after two tries. Wait, I'm still recording. Yes, I'm still recording. I am still recording. Everything is recorded. Great. Um, but here's the deal now. Yeah, okay, I'm good. Um, but here's the deal now. If you really want to make this document proper and presentable, um, you should go through it, clean it up, and put it into clean paragraphs. Now, to me, this is not relevant because to me, I have no use for this document actually in this project. Um, but I will tell you when this is important. Mm. So this, is, this would be, first of all, important if you're a beginner. If you're a beginner, you really want to do as much work as possible on your story from very early on. The more work you do, however long it takes you, however annoying and sometimes even boring it might be, do it. Trust me, just do it. Uh, when you get to set, um, the better you know your story, the better you already know the answers you expect your speakers to give the better it will all play out, the better you'll be able to respond to anything that your speakers say, which sometimes might surprise you, which sometimes might be unexpected, but you'll have already done your legwork, you'll be fine. Um, also, it's very important to have this document, especially when you are working on a spec, when you don't actually, when you're not commissioned by a network or, or by a client like I am at this point, um, but you're just looking to make a project and thinking I might sell it later. I might, uh, I don't know, find a distributor for, distributor for it later. Because here's the deal. If you take everything I did here, and this is one, two, three pages, essentially. If you take all of this and summarize it into three brief paragraphs, which ends up being just around a half a page, perhaps, um, this essentially becomes your pitch. This is the pitch that you send to your producers, to your companies. It lets them quickly read your story. And just from reading this between one and three paragraphs, and it should be between one and three paragraphs, your producer or your client knows exactly what your story will be. 
Um, so that's one point of use. Um, that, that's one purpose that you're gonna have for this document. And another purpose is if you're just a beginner and if you've sectioned this out into paragraphs that are paragraphs that are written out in your interviewee's voice, expected voice doesn't matter, even if the even if the things you wrote are not exactly what they're gonna say, or if you don't know what they're gonna say. Um, but if you write it out that way, then what you can do is you can really easily go to go into your A roll questions list by reverse engineering this, because then essentially you're taking each sentence that you wrote down and turning it into a question. So here, let's say, just to show you how this will work, you know, we started with foxes are great because at this point I ask my speaker, you know, what do you find uh, the best, what do you think is the greatest quality of foxes? Next, when I am among foxes, I feel that everything's gonna be okay. And I would ask, um, imagine yourself, or no, not imagine yourself, I would simply ask, um, how does being around foxes make you feel? Next, I can't stand seeing foxes suffer. That's why I decided to open this rescue and help them save those animals. Simple question. What made you, what was the key, re what made you decide to open your rescue? What was the key reason why you decided to do this work? And she will answer this and she might answer something completely different. It might not be about the foxes suffering and there might be other reasons, but, but this lets me keep this narrative that I structured here. Finally, I care for I care for them. I find them safe. I blah, blah, blah. I care for them. I find them safe, healthy, permanent homes. Um, the question, the reverse of this would be: Tell me how you help the foxes that come to your rescue. And if you have everything written out in paragraphs, then for your following form for the A roll questionnaire, you're just going through it and converting your statements to questions. For me, I'm gonna leave this document at this point right here where it is, um, just because I realize this video is now an hour and 20 minutes almost, and, um, and because I trust that I really don't need to babysit you guys to, to quite that extent. I think it's fairly, it's fairly clear how this works right now. It's not rocket science. I trust that you can figure it out. If you absolutely can't, comment below, I will help you out, or I'll make a separate video and go through this tiny little detail and, um, and section it out into paragraphs. But for me, for my purposes, um, I feel that this is good enough for me to work with. I'm already commissioned for the project. Nobody at all needs to see this very write up. Um, although I will make it available for you guys in the description as well, in case you, you want to just open it up and follow it. Um, and well, I hope this has been at least a little bit helpful. I will clean this document up a little bit just to fix some spelling mistakes and, um, and yeah, actually not much more. And I will make it available to you. And other than that, I'm going to move over to, to build my A-roll interview questionnaire for this Fox's story. Um, I'll separate that into another video so as not to make one video that's seven hours long. <laughs> but um, thank you for tuning in. Um, to hear more about this project, please be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, check out ethereumsky.com. And until next time. Yeah.